Okay. Um, I mentioned earlier that I discovered uh, a few circuits that ran on 28 volt. This was in a uh, military uh, receiver and they they run right off a 24 volt system but they they call everything 28 volts so 28 to 30 32 volts uh, works just perfect the little power supply I made for this one I'll show you in a minute it's uh, just a 25 volt transformer with four diodes and uh, so electrolytic capacitors and a bleeder resistor and it comes out uh, right at 30 I think it was 30.6 volts um, the two I experimented with and found out that works good is a 6BH6 common little 7 pin receiving tube runs on 6 volt filaments and I haven't had time to try them yet but the 6BJ6 it should work equally well they're the same base diagram uh, cathode to pin 2 and uh, suppressor grid pin 7 on a 6AU6 you'll have to swap those in other words pin 7 will be the cathode on an AU6 and uh, pin 2 will be the suppressor grid but this is what I have this little thing set up for right now that I built and what this is let me find okay there it is there What I've got in here if any of you have heard of what they call a TCXO it's a little hermetically sealed you can see that there some of them this is what they call a half size this one's full size these things run off of 5 volts they're a little oscillator circuit they put out, most of them anyhow, put out one volt peak to peak, which is plenty to drive the grid of a tube. Um, they're stable, saves you the trouble to have to find a crystal and build a circuit and come up with a, an output that's stable. These are pretty temperature stable and you can get them in just about any frequency range. What I am using in here this particular TCXO is uh, 5 megahertz. Uh, it's actually 5.0688 is the actual frequency. Um, I pull my 5 volts right off of the 28 volt line. Use a 1.5K resistor, drops it, and a 5.2 volt zener, a 1 watt zener, and you tie it into the 5 volt line the other side is grounded just ground it to ground and then the output pin use a 10 picofarad and I feed the grid of the uh, 6BH6 I have left this circuit uh, the original part numbers as shown in the uh, the uh, handbook and what this is, this is from, uh, I better get the, there it is. Okay, there's the original schematic, as it is right out of the uh, technical manual. It's figure 27. This is what they show on that page. All the same part numbers I've left on here except for the parts that I've added. So that if you want to look at this, you can see what I've, what changes I've made. Well, it has a RF gain, which is uh, standard you're going to need if you're going to use this for your front end of a receiver, and that's what this is for. Uh, I forgot to say, this is the front stage, or from between the antenna and maybe uh, your first mixer stage, you're going to want an RF amp. And so it has RF gain on it. I've got this one preset with just uh, 1K to ground, so it's about the same as if it was mid-range this control is balanced out because they run 28 volt positive on one end uh, the closer this arm goes to ground 
the higher the gain. In other words, you're pretty much grounding the cathode. And as you run it up, you're adding voltage and you're turning down the gain of the tube. And I haven't hooked that up in this circuit. Uh, I've just simply used a 1K resistor, just hooked it to ground. But this is the essential circuit right out of the manual. And like I say, I've made some changes. Uh, I figured out some wire turns for the coil so that this coil will resonate at that uh, 5 megahertz. The first thing I'm going to listen to or try to listen to to test the receiver is going to be WWV. That's my target for why that frequency, why I chose the TCXO. So I wanted the antenna coil, the first antenna coil, to be tuned somewhere around 5 megahertz. So, um, how to check this thing to see if it works? Flip it over here. This is the little. Uh, get it into the video. All right. I've got the, kind of just a test power supply. I've got a couple extra transformers. Uh, this one's for filament and this is the 25 volt transformer that gives me my 30 volts and so we'll plug that in now the detection circuit here if you can see that um, it's a pair of diodes I guess I didn't I need to draw a schematic of that it's a pair of 1N4148. Oh, I know where I have that schematic. Right here. This is real handy. Okay, this is back on that voltmeter. This right here is what we're looking at. Two 1N4148s. They're hooked back to back. One of them is hooked ground. The other one hooked positive to a little uh, capacitor, like a .01. And what I'm going to do, this is what's sticking out right here, that's the end of it. They're actually soldered across the little .01. And <clears throat> the little 10 picofarad sample cap is right there. That's so that I can detect a voltage when this coil is at resonance. And I'm just going to simply use a common cheapy harbor freight <laughs> junky voltmeter but hey it works it works just fine come on get across there going to make a liar out of me for some reason here. Uh. Tube's not lit for some reason. Now. Maybe it'll come on. Oh, printer came to life. <clears throat> oh, what did I do? Bump something, maybe. Showing we got something, but what's going on? Oh, you know, 
it might help if I plug in the right power supply. <laughs> I plugged in the wrong one. All right. I get going here. All right, there it comes to life. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. And the idea, this variable cap, is across that coil. And we're just going to vary it. And we'll see the voltage is going up. Oh, a little more, maybe. 16. No, nope, it starts going back. So you peak it. I think I've seen 7. There it is. Pretty close to peak. So that is the point at which that coil is resonant at. And that's, we're just simply measuring the uh, amount of uh, voltage across that coil. And that's actually with only 28 volts on the plate of that tube, it's amplifying that one volt signal. And so we got one volt peak to peak going in on the grid. Screen volt has 28 volts on it. And there's 28 volts just going through the coil to the plate of the tube. And this is where uh, I'm measuring the uh, voltage. Um, the 38 volts came from, uh, I should have changed that. Um, I had it set for uh, 3.8 megacycles and I think the little TCXO was probably a little higher. I didn't look it up, but it may have been 2 volts or so. But with this one, we get about a little, roughly half of that. So around 17 volts is what the voltmeter shows. 17.5 right now is kind of settled in, seems to be happy with that. But that proves that that tube is amplifying uh, with only 28 volts on the plate. Now, another circuit that I've used, let me get my papers here, unhook this. another circuit that I've used is uh, I think this was page 63 looks like I got clipped off on my printer uh, page 63 of that same manual now let's see oh, I was gonna tell you where to find that manual I'm sorry I'm getting ahead of myself here Okay, um, the manual is in uh, PDF form. It's the R392 slash URR manual. The technical manual number, the Army number, is TM11-858. And the date of the manual was 29th of June, 1954. So when you get that manual, you'll see that on the front cover, you'll know that's the right one. And this is where I'm taking all my references from. So page 20, or figure 27 was on page 54. That was uh, uh, where did the other oscillator that I had out here. There. That came from page 54. That was the first IF amp, rather. Okay, uh, the page that I got this off of is, let me find it, all right, there it is, I think that's, I think it's page 63, uh, this is what they term or call the PTO. It's a permeability tuned oscillator. It has a slug that moves in and out of a coil and that's the permeability part of it. And 
it's the military designation for that tube is a 26D6 and this is where I stumbled onto this I wondered what a 26D6 was and if it had a substitute well when I went looking uh, and read the uh, sheet the data sheet on the 26D6 at the bottom of the page it said all curves follow for a 6BE6 so I thought, wait a minute, a 6BE6? I know those tubes. I've used them. So I had to go, I dug one out real quick, hooked the circuit up, and uh, kind of guessed at a uh, coil. And on that, uh, let me see, it's right here. I haven't got this one in operation. I've actually pulled the coil out of it, but this is what I set up. And with 28 volts, this thing oscillated. And I got a signal out of it. I could read the signal from uh, right through the tube. I could tell what the uh, oscillator itself was running at. So, it's uh, 40 turns, close wound. 30 gauge wire, quarter inch diameter form, and the tap is at 11 turns from the ground end. Now, in just testing it, there was a signal input grid at pin 7. I just simply put a 10K resistor there arbitrarily. I don't know why I chose it. I just put a 10K and said, there, try it. And then I fired it up. I put a, the frequency counter right here with a 10 puff sample cap and I can see my frequency as I varied uh, a uh, variable capacitor across the coil so I can see what it was running at. If you was going to use this in a circuit you would change R1 to a 1 meg resistor and this little circuit here would be added. This capacitor keeps you from uh, shorting the bias to ground. It needs that one meg resistor so the tube can uh, draw its own bias. So the sample from the antenna would come through a 22 picofarad capacitor, a tuned coil, and a 12 to 100 puff which is, this is pretty close you can see what that thing is. That's pretty close to so if you just spot one this is going to be pretty close to what you're looking for. They have them to where they're uh, hex nut adjust. Uh, try to find the ones with a shaft and this one here actually had a threaded collar or a, sh a kind of a shoulder that stuck to the panel and then you just put a ring nut and a washer on it. it makes it easy to mount. The other type have you mount them with two screws they're not quite so easy to work with but anyhow that's the circuit and if this was going to be the mixer stage of the converter you would then uh, you wouldn't put the RF choke in the plate like I did that would be removed and this is where your IF transformer your 455 KC IF transformer would go in this position here and then of course the IF transformer uh, is one that uh, you can pull out of the CB radio. This would be uh, actually the Johnson uses a 6BE6 so that transformer would then still stay with a, a 6BE6 a 12 volt on this one because I was running it from with uh, 12 volts of uh, DC but it doesn't make you can uh, find different voltages of those so whatever is handy for you you can do 12BE6, 6BE6 uh, it just depends on the filament voltage you want to use. But at any rate, X and X would go right here. You take out the choke and put in the coil. One end of the uh, IF transformer gets grounded, and then, like I say, that ties right into the grid of the, uh, I think they use a, a 6BJ6, or a, I actually would use a 6AU or a 6BA6 in that position but okay and so the full circuit then would look like that 
as I have it drawn. So here we are. The little amplifier that I just showed you, the circuit here, it becomes the antenna coil and you make two of those. So you'd copy that, make one exactly like it. You'd want it to actually resonate at the pretty much the same spot. If you have a capacitor checker, you would get this to resonance, unhook everything from the cap without bothering the cap, and then just simply measure that to ground and see what that capacitance is. And that'll give you your target for winding the second coil. You want the second coil with roughly the same spot. So on that one, it comes out uh, 3.5 to 7 megahertz was approximately 55 turns, 30 gauge wire, quarter inch diameter. So L1 and L2 would be this exactly the same. And then you have a tremor across the L2 and a tremor across L1. And you adjust those for your strongest signal. The mixer circuit just talked about. This is how it gets incorporated. Here I have the transformer hooked in. And again, I got the uh, dimensions for the uh, oscillator coil. This, by the way, is a Hartley oscillator circuit that this is in. You can look them up. Um, and this is what I found that works. Here's your one meg resistor is in place. And <clears throat> you're getting your signal off the plate of the RF amp through a 100 picofarad cap into the grid of the mixer. The combination of the oscillator here and the incoming signal gets mixed. Yeah, the tube does the math and you come out with a difference frequency of 455. In other words, the oscillator is going to be running at 455 kcs higher than the incoming frequency. That's what your target is. So if you was going to receive, uh, say, uh, WWV as your test signal, you would want your oscillator running at 5.455 megahertz to receive a 5 megacycle signal. Okay, now show you some other In that receiver is uh, uh, two stages on the front end of RF amplification. It has a first. Oop, that's the wrong one. Okay, there's first RF amp. Uh, first RF amp and second RF amp. I don't know if I have the schematic for the second. I get the IF amp. Okay, I guess I didn't find it. But they're all pretty much hooked up the same, if you look. There's not too much technicality. I mean, it looks complicated with all the coils and their switches and all this stuff running all around. But when you come right down to what the tube is, they feed 28 volt through a 1K resistor. The 1K resistor is there <clears throat> to keep from doing any damage in case something shorts. It doesn't really need to drop the voltage. It's just that little buffer that if something happens inside the tube, you're not going to smoke a lot of parts. Uh, and I don't even know if that 1K resistor would get very warm with 28 volts. It would probably get, after a while, it would probably char. But it isn't passing much current. These tubes are really low current um, on the 28 volt. They're just a, maybe on the order of a milliamp or two. Um, it looks complicated. This choke here wouldn't need to be there. The military uses that to uh, keep other interference from coming up through the uh, 28 volt or the ground line. Here, this is where they're running their uh, line to the uh, RF gain. And this is just a cleaning choke. It just stops any interference from entering the tube in this direction. So they even got a point one right here at the cathode. So essentially all they're doing here is varying the voltage one way or the other. 
Okay. The first I F amp. It's the same, except for a grid. By self bias, they got a 2.2 meg there, and again, 28 volts through a 1k resistor goes through the coil to the plate. And as you, uh, I wish I had some other, some higher voltage ones. I'll have to find them. Oh, maybe I do. Maybe I do. Yeah, okay. Here's kind of an example. I don't know if you can see that. This is from a T195 transmitter. And here, okay, they got a 6AU6 as a, uh, a buffer. They got all kinds of resistors going on. They got a resistor in the cathode circuit, 100 ohm. Uh, their bias resistor is a little different. Here's a 10K. And on the screen resistor, they're using 33K. And I don't, it's not, oh, uh, I need another. This is, uh, doesn't show it. It's off, the, off of this sheet. But I think they use uh, like a 15, where is it on this one here? Here, 10K resistor for the plate and a 33K for the screen. So they actually have to drop the voltage because they're starting off with 150 volts. But that's what makes working with the little circuits, the 28 volts, kind of more fun. You're not so apt to get shocked. It's easy to get the 20, uh, 28 volts or 30 volts. Okay, um, these are some circuits I haven't tried yet, but there's no reason why they won't work. Uh, there's a crystal oscillator. This one here uses a 6AJ5. Uh, there's no reason why a 6 a K5 won't work. I tested one uh, as an amplifier and it, it worked just fine. Again, they just they have a 1K resistor in the 28 volt line. Screen is tied right 28 volts and from here to the coil over to the plate 28 volts. They have a fairly high resistance here on the grid. This one is the 100K resistor and they have a crystal tied to ground and that's a crystal oscillator okay and this is your beat frequency oscillator or BFO it uses kind of the same oscillator circuit that the uh, uh, VFO uses a tapped coil and again it's a Hartley oscillator circuit uh, here they're using 220k to ground on the grid, control grid. But on the plate side, here's 28 volts again through a 1k into the screen. And this time, this is where they use a choke on this one because they don't have, it's a broad band so they don't actually put uh, a tuned coil on the output. They're just worried about tuning this and this provides a uh, sample to beat against an incoming signal so that you can receive like a CW note or uh, sideband. You just kind of, uh, this thing basically throws a carrier on top of the incoming signal and you vary it one way or another to get their uh, voice or the tone, pitch in the CW about where you want it. And they're just using a sample here, they're using a 30 puff cap on that one. But same idea, they're showing a 26A6 um, I think a 6BH6 would work just fine. Uh, 6BJ6 would probably work just, yeah, either one of those. 6BH or the uh, BH or the BJ. Oh, uh, yeah, here's that thing again where I was talking about the cathode on the A6 or an AU would be pin 7 on the cathode and pin 2 is the suppressor and here it's just the opposite so you'd swap those pins everything else is the same so the suppressor is on 7 cathode is on 2 on both of these tubes 
<clears throat> that's the only changes you'd have to make when you go to hook that up but you could test that oscillator on that okay <clears throat> going along here is the IF amp this looks complicated yeah but ignore this stuff here this is band spread uh, two four and eight KC band width the receiver was able where they wanted to narrow it up for I think they received even ready radio teletype so they wanted to real narrow uh, bandwidth but if you ignore that it's just a standard IF transformer they have a little piece coming in here that's tapped but again that goes to the switch and these counteract part of this output coil so like I guess they ignore that you got the same circuit you got uh, RF gain on the cathode your 28 volts is fed through a 1k resistor to the screen goes through the coil from the plate 28 volt here they have a 20 120 K across and what this does it makes this tend to want to be broadbanded to start with so it'll it doesn't have a sharp tuning peak is what that's making it it kind of broadens it out and then they can select that by having these coils that actually oppose part of that second IF pretty much a mirror image I was gonna, yeah 2.2 meg 2.2 meg on the grid 1k again to the screen to the coil back to the plate and this thing's tied in on here they're using this tube they have a, a little milliamp meter and it's tied over to uh, a little control that does uh, meter zero for yeah, like an S meter and they're pulling that off the second IF okay that's it for this time around um, what I am gonna do is uh, I'm gonna try to go ahead here's my test setup that I've got the tubes going here the BFO RF amp the mixer and this is the uh, main tuning condenser here and the BFO right here and this is the BFO coil uh, it had to be huge because it's 455 KC's so it's real low frequency so I've got that all set up and tested it works uh, I've got an RF